Good evening. Zachary Chopchinsky, bow tie author. Guessing you knew that. Welcome back to the lair, as I like to call it. Uh, for those of you that are, might be new to these videos, I uh, call my office my lair. Um, yeah. So, I wanted to make a quick video tonight, first and foremost. Hey guys. Last week's video, we're kind of rolled into a Facebook takeover that we did. Um, so... Yeah, so you guys kind of kind of got those videos. Sorry, my tie's a little bit crooked. It's kind of driving me nuts. This week's bow tie, once again, brought to you by a good friend of mine, Jackie Wheeler. She keeps sending me these things. And, I mean, I'm not going to complain. Because uh, she'll usually send me these. And then, like, a matching um, suspenders. Didn't want to put the suspenders on right now. Uh, I know you're like, oh, look at that nice shirt. Going to be honest with you, not wearing pants. And you need pants for suspenders. That's like the first rule. So, um, very nice. Repping my wife's colors. Uh, for those of you that might not know, I am actually a Slytherin. I know you might not think that, but I am. My wife, can you guess? Ravenclaw. She's a smart one. Uh, my wife's actually a forensic chemist with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. She gets to do all the cool CSI stuff. So, uh... Yeah, pretty cool. So it makes sense that she would obviously be Ravenclaw. Um, she's very smart and very good with her smarts. Um, a little too good. Like, sometimes we'll be watching TV and she'll just kind of go, do you know how easy it is to poison somebody and not leave a trace? And I'll go like, oh, what the fuck? Did, what, did I not do the dishes? Jesus, I'm doing shit now. Um, so it's always fun in my house. Uh, I make sure to make my drinks. I uh, love my wife, but sometimes she'll like, here's your drink. And she'll give me she'll too much eye contact, and I'll worry. So then I'll just make me something. Uh, I'll pour it in a plant. The plant hasn't died yet, so I'm guessing she doesn't try to kill me with anything. Uh, the day the plant dies, I have questions. Just saying. Um, so, yes. I uh, made a quick little uh, post. I was uh, earlier today. Uh, I was at a uh, bookstore. Um, I don't want to say the name of the bookstore because they're not paying me, but, um, let's just say they would be a royal building that you might find in a farm. Building that you might find on a farm and a type of royalty. You put it put it together. Um, so, I was there, and I, I noticed something, I don't know if you guys have noticed this either, of how many people are New York Times bestsellers? One. Two, how do you become a New York Times bestseller? And three, how many people are, like, every fucking book I picked up was new, for the New York Times bestseller? By the way, they were all different authors, so it's not like I was just, like, working my way down a section, and just so happens I kept grabbing the same author, like, author like an ass. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like, why not me? Like, I guess, I guess I'm not making you guys laugh enough, so I gotta work on it a little bit more. But, um, with that, a few days ago when I was in there, I bought myself a new book. Dun, dun. Well, I guess that's, like, not really the sound you'd want to make, because it's Shark, but it's not Jaws. Um, Meg. Um, by Steve Alton. Y'all, this is actually a really, really good book. Um, I've spoken in the past about how I'm all about doing your research and having those accuracies in there because those small little nuances can really make or break a story all day long. Um, Mr. Alton, he does a fantastic job of utilizing science to explain why this giant fucking killer shark is kind of lurking about and still doing its thing like way after it's supposed to be extinct. Um, the way that he utilizes the science to describe it, you never stop and pause and think, this is a stretch, like laser guns or, any, or anything like that. Like, you're reading it like, holy F, I might have to Google this to see if, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you, you kind of read it as, like, it's real science. I absolutely love it. I recommend it. It's really good on people that might like um, science fiction, um, things with, like, dinosaurs and sharks, things of that such. Um, um, it hasn't gotten too gory yet, so I'm not going to say the gore factor. Um, but it's, it's a really good book and I highly, highly recommend it. There is a, already a character in there. I'm only about a third of the way through. I'm at about 165 pages. There's already a character in there that I hope dies violently. Um, I hope is that one character in a lot of these ones that dies violently. Um, just as 
absolutely, I'm not going to tell you who or why. You'll know who if you read it. Because uh, I feel like it's going to give a little bit away, but uh, that person needs to, you know. Um, so anyway, yeah, just wanted to kind of check in a little bit, guys. Uh, vent uh, about New York Times and who they decide are best-selling authors. And I'll uh, tell you about the new book. Um, I've been getting a lot of good press lately for the second for the second book in my in my series, Curiosity, and The Hounds of Aron. I greatly appreciate all you guys out there that are reading it, hopefully enjoying it. Um, and yeah, uh, working on the third one. Hopefully that one's going to be out by Christmas. So, you know, great stocking stuff for there. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to go because uh, it's like... It's like 8 o'clock, a little bit after 8, way past my bedtime, because uh, I'm an old man. And, yeah, so I'm going to get going. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great night. I'm sorry that tomorrow's Monday. I didn't invent the calendar, so it's not on me. Uh, but good luck on your week, and drink all the coffee. Okay, bye. <laughs>